Good morning, party people. Today, I've got a very exciting video for you. We're talking about how to customize your own kicks. Okay, so the sneaker I've chosen for today's video is the Air Jordan 1. This was the first sneaker I think I ever bought myself from Nike. Always loved this shoe, so it's one I kind of wanted to play with. I've also always wanted it in black and white. I've always had a thing for black and white sneakers, um, so that's what I've done here. Here's the end product. This was a basic black out sneaker that I've gone through and customized. I've oversized the tick. I've made it so it doesn't wrap around the same way. Just chucked some new laces in and added new badging to the tongue. Kept it pretty simple and clean. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do the same thing. So, what are you gonna need for this video? You are going to need a pen, a Sharpie, preferably in black for these shoes, a pair of tweezers, a good sturdy pair of scissors, a craft knife, a weird picky thing, one set of matches, some craft glue, sneaker protector, scrap leather, and maybe a coffee. All right, so I'm gonna get this stuff out of my little desk here. So the first thing you knew, the first thing you're gonna need here is to get your sneaker. Here is a brand new pair of Jordans. As you can see, this was the black on black with gray hints. Um, this is the base shoe that I've created my little custom in. So you can see here, as I said, it's an oversized tick down the side now, chuck some new laces in it. I've taken off the gray of the heel branding, added a new tongue logo, change the laces. Nothing too out there, too over the top, but it's enough to make it a very unique, cool looking shoe. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people being like, it looks like an off-white. That's because it's kind of like where I got the idea. I loved what he did with the Vape Max, with the oversized tick, and just the white on black. As I said, always love white and black, so that's what I've done here. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the stuffing out of the shoe. I'm gonna take the laces out completely. You wanna start with sort of the shoe as open and easy as it can be. Okay, that's part number one done. Now, the first step I took with customizing these was I took to removing the ticks from the side. The reason I did this to start with is because I found it quite hard to freehand draw the Nike tick on the side. So I'm actually gonna use this to trace my own to create my own tick for the side. So that's what we're gonna do here. So that's where we get our weird picky thing. I don't know what this is called. My mum lent it to me. Um, you can get it from craft suppliers or anything like that. Going through, carefully taking out the thread along the tick here. Now the way I've done this is I go through pretty much every second tick you'll see then it starts lifting up and you can just peel it away. All right, so as you can see there, I've kind of like cut a thread for a lot of them. Now we can just slide this underneath and start cutting out from underneath. And that will just peel the whole leather strip up while just cutting the threads. Makes it a lot easier to remove the patches and you're not damaging the structure of the actual shape. Cool, as you can see there, there's the whole thing peeled back. Grab my little craft knife here. Be careful with these. I find the back here and I'm just gonna do a nice even slice as close to the end here as possible and that just peels away, nice and simple. There is my tick I'm gonna to use to create my own custom tick. So I'm gonna put that one aside for now. Next step I'm gonna do here is remove all these threads. That's where the tweezers come in handy. Cool, so as you can see there, that is completely gone now, all the thread is out. There is the little puncture holes from the stitching, that is fine, I'm okay with that, um, because most of the new tick is gonna cover there, and the more you wear these, the more they're gonna wear in anyway, so that's fine. On to the other one. All right, so as you can see there, both sides of the ticks are gone. There's the second one laid out. Now I'm gonna leave that one sitting there on the desk. Shoe is done for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is get a piece of paper, any bit of paper, won't matter. I'm gonna lay the tick down. 
Let's grab my handy pen, which is right here, and we're gonna trace around the tick. Now this is what we're gonna use as our template for cutting out the bigger tick. Now what I did last time was I actually just traced it by eye, slightly outside of the tick. So I've gone about four or five mil outside of the tick here and just done a rough sketch all the way around the outside like so. Nothing too fancy. Cool. So, once you're done with that, it's gonna end up looking like this. Here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see there, if I lay it on top there, it is slightly bigger, not a whole heap. Um, that's something I wanted to keep fairly close to the original size, just slightly bigger. And what I've also done towards the end here is I've tapered it off as I've cut this into a like square end, I wanted to have the actual tick part. So I've added the point to the tick just by tapering it. Done and done. Now, what are you gonna need next? Leather. You don't necessarily need leather. You could use fabric, you could use a nylon, you can use a cotton, whatever you want. Um, I wanted to have this as like a kind of premium looking material. So I use this like textured white leather. It's just scrap leather. I got it from a craft supply store. Next thing I'm gonna do is flip it onto the other side. Don't draw on the side you're gonna have facing up. Down the other side, as you can see there, there is a tick I've just cut out a minute ago, but I'm gonna show you how I did that. Get my pen, gonna hold the tick down, like so, and I'm gonna trace around it. Again, you don't need to be super clean as this is going on the back of the, the material. The important thing here though is to keep your positioning the whole way through. Now you could tape this down if you wanted to. Um, I'm just doing this by hand because that's kind of how I prefer to work, but you do what works for you. And there you can see, that's my tick on the leather. Now the next step we're gonna do is go through and cut that out. Um, I've already done it. I've got one sitting there, so I'm going to use that one. But as you can see, it's pretty simple. I've just gone through and cut along, followed the trace, the shape, and you're going to end up with a bunch of ticks. So I also tried to start with this like suede material, um, but I liked the look of this leather a little bit more, so I ended up using that one. So we've got our ticks. We've got two different styles. Boom and boom. They're the ones I'm going to use. The next step here is, so we see in the back here, all this little filament that sticks off. I wanted to get rid of some of that just so it cleaned the whole thing up. That's why my matches come in handy. Get your matches, strike a match. There we go. Now, I'm likely just gonna hold this over the back there and it's actually just gonna burn away those extra little bits. Nothing too much. I'm not trying to burn the whole back, just get it. So you can see there, it neatens it up and it makes the, the frayed edges go away. Okay, so now we've got both our white ticks ready to replace. As you can see here, it is a bigger, more oversized version of the tick, exactly what I wanted to go for. Now to line it up, because this is a bigger tick, you're gonna find that on the shoe, if you try and put it where you had it before, it's not gonna sit properly. It's gonna sit a bit too high. I wanna have this slightly further forwards. So still gonna run it up along this paneling here, but the way I've measured this is I've got it sitting down pretty much to the bottom of the shoe and about two to three mil in from the end. Using my shoe I had there, right down the bottom, two or three mil in. Um, now you can see if you look carefully the dots, the, the perforation from the stitching before, that's fine. I'm happy to leave them there. As I said, the more this shoe gets worn in, the more that will disappear. Yeah. This is where the craft glue comes in. I tested this stuff out before I used it. Um, you want to have something that bonds fabric, paper, leather, plastics, glass, and dries clear. Drying clear is very important here because you don't want to have um, like a colored residue left over if it spills out at all. Now, I'm gonna get another bit of scrap leather here. That's gonna be my little base to stick this on. And the way I did this was, always start small. That's my little secret for this one. Glue does spread quite easily. So I'm gonna put a blob in the middle there, 
and then we're going to do a fine blob running right down the tick. A bit more there. And then another really fine bit along the top. Now you notice I haven't gone right to the end. The reason for that is I need somewhere to hold it when I'm sticking it on. Now I just use this and spread it out. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the lid of the glue, you can use a bit of the matchstick you had. I found this helped quite a bit in order to spread the glue out to the edges. It is quite a like um, thick consistency, quite gluggy. So it looks like it's not spreading well, but trust me, it is. And it does dry quite fast. So putting it on, spraying it out. No need to go crazy. It will cover once you press it down. That is that bit done. So make sure your shoe is clean. Lay it down. Now for the fiddly part. I'm going to hold it by the tip and just place it down. Now once you've got the base bit inside, you can apply pressure. Now this is the reason we took the laces out before, so you can actually apply pressure from both sides and get it sitting down nice and even. Now, I don't know if you can see there, but as I press that down, you do get little bits of glue coming through the sides there. Just get your little matchstick again, and wipe them down. That little bit there will dry out as you go. Now, as I said, this bit's still sticking up. That's okay, we're gonna add glue to that bit after. For now, we just wanna get that on in place nice and straight, like so. So while we wait for that side to dry before we attach the other side, I'm going to go through and remove the little Jordan symbol here. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to add my own badging. I had these milestone pins made up a little while ago and I thought that would look perfect sitting on the tongue there. Like so. So I'm going to go through and attach that now. Again, get my little blade. Now this isn't too hard at all. You want to just go through the seam in between these two lines of stitching, I just want to go through and give it a really simple, straight slice across the fabric because that will allow this then just to pull out. And then we can pull it from the top too and pick the threads out. Now I'm actually going to leave that bottom tag bit there because I quite like the way it's going to frame and give me structure for the pin. Get in my pin. Cut the tongue there, just gonna place my pin in the center, make sure it's straight, nice and simple. Now, because these have little basic pin uh, backings, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in there just to hold it in place, because I don't want these things coming off and stabbing me in the ankle. Again, just a tiny dab. That's enough. Now I'm just going to press and hold that in place. Go. Cool. Now we can come back and see here, this side is stuck on. I'll leave that bit to the end. I'm going to go through and do the other side now. So the way I'll go through and do the other side, I go through and line my tick up, make sure, yep, it's the same size, same shape, about the same length. I'm going to do a quick little test run. Put it on, put it in place. Yep, looking good, sitting neat. Great, good to go. Brush it down, lay it down. As you can see here, I've gone over the pen there. I was much, much less smooth on this side. That's okay. As you can see, because it does dry on quite clear, that'll just scratch off. Wipe my hands down the excess glue, hand through, and then we can press it down. All right, so that's both sides glued down. So the next step I'm gonna do is go back to this end here, peel this bit back up, get my little stick of glue. I'm gonna put a bit on the patch here. And I'm actually gonna use just the stick to go through and paste down the end here. Okay, so as you can see there, you've got these little bits around where the glue has dried. Now, you can go through and scrape that off, which I'm gonna do, or alternatively, you can actually get your black Sharpie and go through and trace over it. Because it is a matte finish, 
It's going to cover up those little bits so you don't notice them as much. As you wear these, they will wear in, so it won't be as much of a problem anyway, but just going to get rid of those details there. Up around the heel. Same on the other side. Now the next thing we're going to do while we're going to sharpie out is trace over our Jordan logo. Now as it is grey and the rest of the shoe is black and white, I just blacked it out, made it like a black gloss. So sharpie is perfect for this. Nice and simple. Just tracing over each of the bits with the black. All right, as you can see, now I've blacked out the Jordan logo. Now the last thing I want to do to these is add in the laces. Now I bought this pair of slightly off-white coloured laces. Off-white the colour, not the brand, um, which match perfectly in with my tick. So I'm going to go through and lace these up. How you lace your shoes is entirely on you. I just like to do the basic cross over and down into method. Fun fact while I'm doing this is when I was from like 15, 14, 15, up to the age of 21, I worked in a surf shop and I used to be very good at selling shoes and I used to lace shoes all day, every day. And I got really good at sho doing shoelaces. It's not a brag. I'm not bragging about being good at shoelaces. I'm saying I worked retail for a long time and got experience. That's it. That's your custom pair of kicks. So, the beauty with this is, you can make these as neat, as rough as you like. This is your pair of shoes, one of one, entirely your own. I think that's the beauty of customization and doing things yourself, it is your thing. So don't feel like you need to do anything just because someone else wants you to do it. It needs to be a certain style. You do what you wanna do. I like that this tick is not perfectly perfect. I like it's a bit rough. Um, I like it has that texture on it. I think they look great. Where are you, should we go shoot them? Yeah, Alright, sure. I'm gonna try them on, show you how they look on foot. Let's do it in three, two, one, one, go. Cool, that is it guys. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with is don't forget to use sneaker protected. Keep those kicks looking cool. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We do new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. See you guys on Monday.